Hello, I'm Jack. Welcome to Practical Programming Channel. In this video series, you will learn everything you need to get started with Web GPU graphics programming. In the last video series, I explained how to set up the development environment for building Web GPU applications. This is the second video lesson. Here, I'm going to show you how to build a simple web GPU application and this development environment, that is, to create a triangle with a single color. Here, we will use the Git tool. If Git is not installed on your machine, you can search for the Git installer on the internet. Git supports Windows, Mac OS, and Linux operating system. Now, I assume you have installed the Git on your machine. Now we are ready to download the source code used in the previous video. Here is the download link. Now open a command prompt window and run the following command. Git clone and copy this link. This will generate a web GPU01 folder on your local machine. This folder contains all the source code used in our last video. Uh, by the way, if you don't want to use Git to clone the source code, you can also download the zip file directly from my Git repository. Now, we want to change the name of the web GPU01 folder to GPU002 and cd into this new folder. Here is the command rn rename and cd GPU002. At this point, we are going to start Visual Studio Code with the command code dot this is a visual studio code interface okay we can close this welcome page now it contains all the source code used in our last video today we are going to build a web gpu application based on this development environment that is we want to create a simple triangle with a single color. Let's open a new terminal window and use the npm install command to install relevant software packages which are specified in the package.json file. OK, finished. Now all the installed packages are stored in the node module folder, just like WebGL. The first thing we need to do to use WebGPU for graphic rendering is to create a HTML file canvas element from this DIST folder. Open the index.html file. First, we need to change the title from 1 to 2 because this is the second video series. Then, we need to replace this part of the code. As you can see here, we change the title of H1 to create a triangle. This part of the code is used to accept user input, where the user can specify a color for our triangle. Here, we use a four-component array to represent a color, with each component representing red, green, blue, and transparency. Each component can take any value between 0 and 1. Since this color will be passed to our shader program, the shader program requires that the floating value of each component must be at least one digit after the decimal point, including 0. If you remove the decimal point and 0, our application will not work. The default value for our each component is 1.0, representing a white color. 
A key element here is a canvas. We define its ID equal to canvas web GPU. We also specify its width and height. Of course, you don't need to fix its width and height. Instead, you can make them to change dynamically according to your screen size. But for sake of simplicity, we fix the size of our canvas here. Later, we will create WebGPU graphics on this canvas. The WebGPU program consists of two parts. One is the control code written in TypeScript or JavaScript, and the other part is the shade code run on the GPU. Because the WebGPU API has not been finalized, there is still debate about which shader language to use. The WebGPU group recommends use of a brand new language called WGSL, which is short for WebGPU Shadering Language. This is the official website of WGSL. From here, you can clearly see that the language is still in the draft stage. On the other hand, some people suggest to use GLSL, that is OpenGL shading language directly, and then use a compiler to convert it into a binary code. In this way, we can avoid difficulties and bugs originated from text-based shader language. In this video series, we will use the official WGSL language. However, later I will use a video lesson to show you how to use the GLSL and its compiler in a web GPU applications. All right, having said so much, we now begin to write the shader code. In the SRC folder, we add a new TypeScript file called shaders.ts. In this file, we add the following code to it. From this code, you can see that there are two shaders here. One is a vertex shader, and the other is a fragment shader. In the vertex shader, we use a floating point back to array to define three vertices of the triangle. Here, a vect2 representing a two-dimensional vector. In the main function, we convert the 2D vector array into a four-dimensional vector array because WebGPU always uses 4D vectors to render 3D graphics. Here, we set the Z component to zero and the W component to one. In the fragment shader, we simply use a 4D vector to define the color of our triangle. Here, color is the input variable, which represents a 4D array provided by the user in the index.html file. This is the shaders we will use when creating a single color triangle. Now, we will use a TypeScript to write Web GPU control code. Open the main.ts file and we need to rewrite its code. Delete this line first. Now we need to import our shader. Then construct a new function called create triangle with this code. This function contains an input argument named color. And here we set its default value as a white color. Here we still use the fat arrow to create our function. This function must be async function because WebGPU API itself is async. Now let's initialize WebGPU and enter the following code. In the last video, we have built the check web GPU function. Here, we will use it to check whether your brochure supports web GPU or not. If it does not, the system will give an error message and the code will start. 
If your brochure supports WebGPU, the program will continue to run. In WebGPU, we can access the GPU by calling the request adapter function. Once we have the GPU adapter, we can call the adapter dot request device methods to get a GPU device. This device provides a contact to work with the hardware and an interface to create a GPU objects such as buffers and textures. We can also run instructions on this GPU device. As with WebGL, we need a context for our canvas element that will be used to display the image or graphics. Here we use the canvas element to request a web GPU context specified by the name GPU present. That is the keywords used by web GPU to create the context. Next, we need to add a code for swap chain. The swap chain defines the web GPU output format. Swap chain has become a universal concept in modern graphic standard. Here we want to define a random pipeline with the following code. Here we first introduce the seeder by calling the seeders function defined in the seeders.ts file. We then use the create render pipeline function to create a random pipeline. Inside this pipeline, the first attribute is a vertex stage where we assign the vertex seeder defined in the seeders.ts file to its module and code. Next is the fragment stage attribute. With course fragment shader we defined previously in the seeders.ts file. Next is another required attribute called the primitive topology. Here we set it to triangle list because we want to create a triangle in this example. The last attribute is a color stage that allows us to specify the output graphics format. Uh, in this example, we set it through swap chain. The color format of our output is BRGA8 and norm. Next, we add the following code to define render path and the command encoder. Here the command encoder is a JavaScript object that builds a batch of buffered command that will be sent to GPU. Next we open a render path by calling the beginning render path method. This render path accepts a parameter of type GPU render path descriptor as a render path option. Here we only use the color attachment that is an array to store image information. In this attachment attribute, it stores the rendering results on the current image of the swap chain. In this example, we store the background color in the local value attribute. The value is 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.8, and 1. Not that we use 1 here. We can ignore the zero after the decimal point because this is a type of script code. Like a JavaScript programming language, it does not distinguish between 1 and 1.0. This is different in the shader code, where we must use 1.0 instead of using 1. Now, we assign the pipeline to the render path and draw our triangle by calling the render path.drawn methods. The drawing methods accept four parameters, including number of vertices, the number of drawing instances, and others. For our example, we join a triangle, so here we set the number of vertices to three and the number of instances to 1. We set the other parameters to 0. We call the underpass method to finish the current render pass, meaning that no more instructions are sent to the GPU. We then submit our instructions to the queue of the GPU device for execution. After running the command, 
our triangle will be written to the swap chain and displayed on the canvas element. Now we finish the implementation for our create triangle methods. This method provides a basic procedure to create web GPU applications. That is, first initialize web GPU API, then create a shader program, set up random pipeline, and build a random path for drawing uh, methods and submit instruction to the GPU for execution. Finally, we can call the create triangle function to generate our triangle. Here, we first create a white triangle with the default color. It can also accept the color input by the user, and then click the change color button to generate a triangle with a different color. Up to now, we have finished our programming. Now, we can run the following command on the terminal window to bundle our TypeScript code in production mode. Use this command npm run prod. OK, the bundle file is created successfully. You can see the bundle file is very small in size. Now, you can click the go live link from the status bar area to open the default Chrome Canary to view our triangle. OK, here is our white triangle. Now, we can change the color of the triangle. For example, we input uh, 0, 1, 0, and 1, and then click the change color button to generate a green triangle. OK. I have created a GitHub repository to host the source code used in this video. I will post the link for the source code below this video. You can click the link to download the source code. I will end this video here. In next video, I will show you how to create a web GPU triangle with different vertex color. See you next time. Bye.